It's Tuesday, a day to serve the Lord. He's going to be with you wherever you go, and he is going to strengthen you for what you're going to face on a Tuesday. I'm Tom Hollis. I am uh, here with Amanda Brocker. This is, by the way, Hope Today, <laughs> and we are having a great program today. That's right. We are going to have Hope Today as we have a very special guest, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. You know, I was talking to my son about his ranking, yeah. and he's like, Mom, he's really high up there you know he is a retired u.s army ranger a paratrooper he also is a former west point psychology professor and he has a usa martial arts hall of fame he's been wow. inducted to that i was like <laughs> So we need to buckle up and we need to get ready. Make sure you have your pen and paper. I believe he's going to give us some great um, just content to help us to know what to do and the orders. What are our marching orders? In what, in what area? What are we talking about? When we have an attack come spiritual against attack. us. That's right. Yeah. So his book is on spiritual warfare, warring orders for virtuous warriors try to say that 10 times <laughs> but this is the reality that we yeah. live in a war that's happening around us all the time but we are god's children but there's a reason he gave us armor to put on yeah. and so dave is going to help us to learn how to suit up and to be ready for every ready attack for that attack absolutely well those are some of the, some of the benefits if you stay with us you're going to learn powerful prayers to combat spiritual warfare mm -hmm. explore ways we can help those battling depression or anxious thoughts and walk in victory over the enemy. All very important things. We're also gonna have Stump the Hosts, where we they try to embarrass us every, <laughs> every week and Stump the Viewer. So uh, be sure to stay for that. Also, very important uh, housekeeping uh, note here that there are new times coming next week for Hope Today, beginning Monday, April 29th. We're gonna be on at 3.30 p.m., 8 p.m., and 1 a.m. Uh, so if you watch us at 9 or, uh, a.m. or 1 p.m., those times won't be there anymore, but you can certainly pick us up at 3.30, 8, and 1. Some new changes, exciting changes. That's right. We're all about changes. We want to better be positioned for God's kingdom to expand here at Cornerstone Television. Well, when it comes to spiritual warfare, our next guest isn't afraid to fight back. Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman served as a U.S. Army Ranger for 24 years and he has seen his fair share of attacks from the enemy. He is the co-author of the book on spiritual warfare. And he joins us now to share how we can overcome the attacks from the devil and live victoriously in Christ. Lieutenant Colonel Dave, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Tom. Such an honor to be on board. Hey, you know, the, the, the bottom line is this. Our purpose on this earth is spiritual warfare. This is not our home. We are soldiers deployed to a war zone. And when our commander calls us home, we, we, we get to leave the battle. But in the meanwhile, we're in the fight. And, and the thing to understand is, in normal warfare, you win in large part by killing the enemy. In spiritual warfare, we win by saving them. The purpose of spiritual warfare is to save lives for eternity through the blood of Jesus and the saving grace. But folks, uh, I, you know, I, I teach cops in all 50 states. I retired from the Army 26 years ago. Uh, I've been on the road over 200 days a year for 26 years. And, uh, and, and it's this, this critical dynamic that everybody has to understand. I, I, I tell all of my, my, I teach our nation's largest fire department. I teach cops in all 50 states. I, I tell them, you see terrible things every day. And you can't help but ask that existential question, uh, oh, how could a loving God allow these terrible things to happen? And what you got to understand is you think you know about God based on television. And if you stop for just a minute, you realize most of what you hear on television is wrong, with the exception of the folks I'm on with today now. They, you know, they, <laughs> but uh, uh, you've got this idea of God being like a helicopter parent that stays on top of you for a lifetime. And, and God is there for a lifetime. Raise everything up to him in prayer. But understand this. Uh, uh, we are not God's puppets. Uh, 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 have you ever heard, if you love something, let it go. If it comes back, it's yours. But that's how much God loves us. Mm -hmm. He loves us enough to let us make our own decisions. Now, that means a lot, a lot of people make bad decisions. A lot of bad things happen. 
You say, God, why don't you do something? He said, I did. I sent you. That's spiritual warfare. That's what we're here for. And what we tell people is don't curse God when he doesn't answer your prayers the way you think he should. You see, in the end, everybody's going to die. No matter how hard you pray, we're all going to die. In the end, every nation falls over my dead. In the end, our son will die. But eternity continues. So God's greatest blessing, God's greatest victory is not to give us a few more years on this earth. It's not to give us less suffering. His greatest achievement is to give us eternity in heaven. And, 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 and that's what it's all about. I, and, and that's what spiritual warfare is all about. We're not just fighting for lives. We're fighting for eternal lives. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing to understand is whosoever believeth shall not perish but have everlasting life. We need to wrap our mind around it. It really did happen. Jesus really did die on the cross. He really did rise from the dead. He really did come back to the disciples. Doubting Thomas really did touch the wounded inside. And here's how we know it. Eleven of the twelve disciples died for their faith. And then the disciples of the disciples, that second generation, died for their faith. And that's straight up solid Roman history. They watched Jesus' disciples die for their faith. They didn't want to die, but they, they, they said, listen, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you kill us that fast, we'll be with Jesus in a better place. And, and, and the thing to understand is to this very day, we have way over 2 billion believers on this planet, by far the largest faith. But then 2 billion believers, what do they do? They believe and, 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 and that's where salvation comes from. And, and what you got to understand is somewhere out there, there's a listener that says, I wish it was true. I wish there was a loving God. I wish there was a heaven. I, I wish it was true. Well, I want you to identify that wish for what it is, as a little seed of faith. And I want you to plant that seed of faith and ask for more faith. God, God, God tells us to ask for more faith. The man came to Jesus, asked him to heal his child. Jesus said, if you have enough faith, anything's possible. He said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Boom, Jesus did what he asked him to do. All God wants us to do is pray for more faith and pray for more love. And, and, and plant your little seed of faith and say, God, give me more faith. And, and that's the path to salvation. And, and, and you really, Amanda, you talk about what is our mission. And this is critical to understand as soldiers in the combat zone, our mission first and foremost, is to love God and love people. Love the Lord that God with all the heart, all the might, and, and, and love others as yourself. Four words, love God, love people. That's our mission. Okay. Now, what you got to do is go back and ask for more love. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you were soldiers and you were going to infiltrate enemy lines and put explosives on a bridge, first thing you're going to do is go get explosives. Well, our mission is to go love, and the first thing we do is go love. God is love. All love flows from God. Mm -hmm. And we should ask daily for more faith and for more love. So our mission is to love God and love people. And if we love and obey God, and if we love people, then we will bring them to the knowledge of salvation, the Great Commission. This is our mission, the Great Commission. This is our mission, the Great Commission. And to bring people to the knowledge of salvation. And, and, and the way we do that, kind of the theme for both my books on spiritual combat, on spiritual warfare, uh, I've got two books, Marine Corps Commandant's Required Reading List for over 20 years. Many of you out there were in the Corps or, or you were in many organizations where my books were required reading. You said, I, I read Grossman's On Combat. I read On Killing. What's he got to say about on spiritual combat? What's he got to say about on spiritual warfare? And, and so Galatians 6, 9, grow ye not weary of doing good. That's, that's our mission. That's how we accomplish the mission. We go out and we do good deeds and we give the honor and glory to God. He doesn't need the honor. He doesn't need, he doesn't need anything from us. But if we try to save the honor and glory for ourselves, it will always be empty. It will be hollow. Uh, if, if you're beautiful, you'll grow old and ugly. If you're young and strong, you're an athlete, you'll grow old. Your, your loved ones will move away from you and they will die. There's only one eternal source of happiness. There's only one eternal source of joy. Uh, give the honor and glory to God, and he gives us love and joy and peace and, and all kinds of good things that come with it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of spiritual warfare in a nutshell. Our mission, love God and love people. The Great Commission, if we truly love God and love people, we'll bring them to the knowledge of salvation. If we had the cure for cancer, 
We'd be screaming from the mountainside. We'd be beating down doors. Well, we have the cure for death. We have the cure for death. Mm -hmm. The grave has no sting. Death has no power. And, and we've got to be energetic about going out mm -hmm. and letting people know about it. So there, <laughs> dear friends, is spiritual warfare in 10 minutes and the book in 10 minutes. But, uh, <laughs> but dear Lord, uh, uh, we should be so excited about what this is and what we're doing. That's right. You know, Satan's spiritual warfare tactics, they're detailed throughout this book. You know, why is it important for us to understand the nature of his attacks? And I love how you have the warning and the order to go with each one. You know, the, uh, the warnings, Erasmus, 500 years ago, wrote the bestseller of their time. You know, it's how to remain virtuous in a violent world. And he created these 22 orders and, and, and then Martin Luther, who we know, but he was contemporary with Erasmus, he created his 22 warnings. So in the military, a lot of people know about op orders and operations orders. But before you get an op order, you get a warning order. Mm -hmm. And the warning order is all the information you need to accomplish a mission at this point. And so we, we, took, we took Erasmus' 22 orders and Luther's 22 warnings we pulled them together and they are so beautiful and they are so powerful. And remember, this was the best-selling book of 500 years ago. These were the, the powerful words that are now brought back up. And, and, and we interlace them with powerful old hymns and, uh, and, and poetry. And, and of course, scripture woven in at, at every level. And, and, and the, the, the dynamics are so exciting. One of the things we talk about is spiritual warfare and our ultimate weapon is prayer you know we go through ephesians chapter six and we we stop with the sword of the spirit and we miss the most important part of all which is to see to pray ceaselessly in the spirit and that's the radio i'm just a little army ranger uh, all i got is what i carry on my back but i get on the radio and i call for airstrikes and i call for medevac i call for resupply uh, our radio is prayer, and the way we win in spiritual warfare is first and more foremost with prayer. And, and God says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in your midst. So our prayers have extra power if you have a prayer partner, have a prayer buddy at work, have a prayer partner at work, but your prayer partner should be first and foremost your spouse. My wife and I, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I, I go to Ukraine in a couple of weeks. I'll be training the troops in Ukraine for a week. Uh, my, my book won Ukraine uh, uh, National Book of the Year Award. I'm in Ukraine, but every night, even when we're not in Kamo, we pray for each other and we lift things up in prayer. And what do we pray for? We pray for our family, we pray for our nation, but first and foremost, we pray for more love and we pray for more faith. That's what God wants us to do. Amen. You talk about in this, the seventh warning and order about not letting any failure or setback turn you away from God. And I know something that you have helped um, soldiers or even officers with is like PTSD, but talk to us yes. a little bit, because I feel like whether we've been in the service or not, even right. as civilian life, there's traumas that we have in life. And how can we not allow those disappointments to you know, be a setback right. to us? You know, uh, I, I teach uh, resiliency. I was a keynote speaker in the first Department of Defense Wide Resiliency Conference, opening speaker, and the second DOD Wide Resiliency. Resiliency is the term for people who do not get PTSD. Uh, and the vast, vast majority of our veterans don't have PTSD. The vast, vast majority of our veterans have post traumatic growth. Nietzsche said, What doesn't kill us only makes us stronger, but Nietzsche stole that from the Bible. Almost 2,000 years for Nietzsche, Romans chapter 5, we glory in tribulation. For tribulation work of patience, patience experience, experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. The idea of being stronger from the bad things in life. But here's the key. Around the planet, one of the pillars of resiliency is faith. And this is, this is a secular dynamic. One of those pillars of resiliency, one of the ways to not get PTSD is to have faith. And then what we can do is we have the power to hand those things over to God. And, and I, I also teach, I've done psychiatric grand rounds. I did Department of Defense wide grand rounds on PTSD. When we re-experience the event, that is not PTSD, it's normal. How you deal with it will decide whether or not it becomes PTSD. And being able to give it over to God and being able to ask God for, for, for the ability to transcend these things 
is a critical part of the healing process with PTSD. And there's a reason why across the globe, this is straight up secular, non-religious. Faith is one of the pillars of resiliency. And, and if you have faith, you got to wonder how do people get through life without God? How, how, do, how do cops do what they do? How do soldiers do what they do without God? And it's true that there aren't many atheists in foxholes. Uh, once you get in that situation, uh, uh, you find yourself recognizing your need for God and the ability to hand things over to God. You know, Dave, we uh, know that our victory is won through Christ. That's been done, yes. completed. Our, our salvation yes. is sure. But yet we still find ourselves in this battle. And many times, many Christians are unprepared for that. What should they do to clearly understand that even though they're saved, there's still a battle that they're part of? You know, uh, when we finally get there with God, uh, we will understand things we can't even comprehend right now. Right now, we're looking through a glass darkly. We barely understand. But, and he will embrace us as his beloved child. But right now, it's all I can do to think about being God's faithful dog. I just want to be God's dog. That's all I want to do. Now, I got a dog. I got an old uh, chocolate lab. And if I let her off the leash, she runs in the neighbor's yard and rolls in something stinky. But I still love her. And God sees every stupid thing we do. And he still loves us. And, and, and one day the sheep dog will rest at the feet of the great shepherd. And we yearn to hear those words, well done, the good and faithful servant. But here's the key. Now, Will Rogers said, if you think you're a man of some importance, try telling another man's dog what to do. <laughs> and if you ever did that, the dog would look at you. And if the dog could talk, here's what he'd say. So I don't know much. I'm just a dog. But I know this. I'm not your dog. And, and, and when we have given our lives to Jesus, we have that eternal salvation, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. But what we need to understand is this. We belong to God, no matter what. And when the evil one comes to you and your loved ones, you look him in the eye, you tell him, I'm not your dog. Amen. Beautifully said. Well, I would love for you just to pray over our audience. You know, so many people are walking through battles, and you know this firsthand. But if you could just pray for our viewing audience. And, and let's pray together. Again, wherever two or three are gathered. Mm -hmm. And we all gather together. Lord, out there somewhere, there is a listener who has not yet accepted you uh, 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 for his salvation. And Lord, we ask right now, that you will take that individual and that they will plant their little seed of faith. Faith is a choice. Uh, we don't know what 95% of the universe is. It's dark matter and dark energy. We, we, we don't know much at all. But what we know is this. We can turn around and say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. First and foremost, help us to let people come to the knowledge of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. And out there are people who are, who are, are weeping and, 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 and deeply concerned about their loved ones who do not have salvation. So let them have the courage, Lord. Let them have the energy, Lord, to tell people about the saving grace of Jesus. Fill them, fill them with your word. Fill them with your spirit. Give them the energy to bring people to the knowledge of salvation. We win spiritual warfare first and foremost by saving lives and bringing them to the knowledge of salvation. And Lord, let us and all those who hear us go forth with energy and with love to let people know about the saving grace that was bought through the blood of Jesus and, and, and bring them to eternity in heaven. And all these things we pray together in love and in thanks and in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel Dave, for really training so many of us to be selfless. It's a beautiful thing. We appreciate you and the work that God is doing through you. Praise God. Thank you. God bless you and God bless America. Amen. Well, don't go anywhere. Stump the host and Stump the Viewer are next, where you'll find out how you can win concert tickets. Plus, we'll look at a scripture that examines how God has delivered us from the darkness. We'll be right back in 60 seconds.
God is calling you to do something significant in the earth for Him, regardless of your age, skill set, or perceived limitations. What's holding you back? When you give to support Cornerstone Television this month, let us bless you with Rick Renner's life-transforming book, Chosen by God. Every page will help you overcome your limited thinking and follow God's plan for your life. Rest assured, God has a plan, and He will thoroughly prepare you to fulfill it if you'll say yes with all your heart. This book will thrill you with the possibilities that await because you are chosen by God. Request your copy when you give by calling 888-665-4483 or donate online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for helping us spread the gospel through life-changing programming like Rick Renner, Hope Today, Hard Questions, and more. To keep your favorite programs coming and receive Chosen by God, donate today. Stop the host. Here we go. We're going to ask, uh, the, we're going to ask ourselves some questions <laughs> that we have not seen and hopefully we'll know the answer. Play along with us. Here's the first one. A roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. To whom or what does this refer? Our enemy refers right. to Satan. He's right. a, a roaring lion seeking. seeking whom he may desire. So we're going to say this is Satan, the devil, our enemy. Okay. Yes, All right. go, Hollis. That's Woo. from 1 Peter 5, 8. And that's, if that's not a good warning to remind you that we're in a battle, I don't know what else is. <laughs> All right. Here is question number two. Bodily exercise profits a little, but what does the Bible say is profitable for all things? I think it's godliness. I think bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable for all things. I hope I'm not making up my own version of the Bible That's here. That's right, we'll it, take it. That we'll sounds take good. godliness. Yes. All right, <laughs> First Timothy 4, 8, a, a perfect Amen. reminder for us. That whole analogy with, you know, the exercise and spiritual exercise, it really fits, you know. So, all right, here's our last one. What did Jesus tell the 12 disciples to take with them when he sent them out to preach? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he told them. He told them to take nothing. Don't take a purse for your, don't take a, you know, yeah, he said take nothing. <laughs> All right, all right, three. That is good. from. We gotta stick with the New Testament. Maybe that was it. <laughs> three for three. That's from Luke 9 3, by the way. Well, it's now time for us to try and stump you, the viewer. To answer this week's Stump the Viewer question, you'll need to go online to ctvn.org slash stump. If you guess correctly, one random person will be selected to win a pair of tickets to an upcoming Amy Grant concert on May 14th in Munhall, PA. Once again, you can only have a chance to win by guessing at ctvn.org slash stump. Okay, here is your question. How does 2 Timothy describe the last days? A, as perilous, B, as scary, C, supernatural, or D, confusing? Go to ctvn.org slash stump to select what you think the correct answer is. The randomly selected winner of the Amy Grant pair of tickets will be announced on this Friday's Hope Today. So you'll have until Thursday to get your answer in. Ooh, I want them tickets. I, I need to hop I off here to eligible. set real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not a viewer. <laughs> well, I am when I'm not here. That's true. So I can call I in tomorrow. That's what I say. <laughs> well, we have a scripture we want to share with you. And, you know, it really ties into a lot of what we've been talking about. We've been talking about spiritual warfare. And, of course, the first and most important step in all that is that we know whose we are. This is Colossians 1, 13 and 14 from the New King James Version. It says, He, meaning Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us in the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. 
And uh, so this is what's so important for us to remember, that we have been translated, I go back to King James with this one, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his own dear son. We have been moved. We, have, we haven't just accepted a code of ethics. We haven't just accepted a, a, uh, you know, a, a to-do list or a goody-goody list or anything like that. No, we have been changed inside. And when we were changed inside, we were moved from one place to another. We're, we've gone from being a citizen of earth to a citizen of heaven. We've gone from being a citizen of the kingdom of darkness. Maybe we didn't think we were there, but we were. And we've gone from that to being in the kingdom of his own dear son with all the benefits and responsibilities of being in that kingdom. I love this because it talks about so much about that new birth that something has happened to you and me if indeed we've accepted Jesus as our savior. That is so true, Tom, you know, and just thinking about this act that Jesus did for God so loved the world, like he was a true warrior where he put us before himself. And you know, no greater love hath anyone ever experienced than that they laid down their brother for someone else. And that's what Jesus did for us. He laid down his life for you and for me. And he invites us to join in this beautiful relationship. He's made this wonderful just connection to our Heavenly Father and us where we were separated before. And I encourage you today to make the decision, as Lieutenant Colonel Dave said, the best decision in life is to follow Jesus, to have that relationship with him. He desires to use you and your life to lay down and that way he can use your life as the mission. Can you imagine that? He's invited us to that same mission to see other people come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's it been said before that people might not go in the church doors, but your life, you are the church. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost and you're going out into your neighborhoods so that others might see and get a glimpse of who Jesus is. And I just know today that God wants to give you hope no matter where you're at, what season, He desires to use your life and He sure does love you. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover God's calling for the church and for the U.S. Best-selling author and TV and radio host Eric Metaxas calls on believers to not just practice their faith, but to embrace it and actively live it out. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.